Welcome back to part two on interface tools. We're going to start where we left off with the previous video. So if you haven't watched that video, use the link above or in the description below to check that out. I'll mention once again that I really appreciate the comments, especially the one that Sandeep left that kicked off this video and gave me the idea to do it and go down this path. So let's talk about what we're going to do in part two. So as I mentioned, we left it where we're just doing a simple text box filter from that particular interface tool. And what we want to do now is go back and make this a data-driven filter uh, using a dropdown. All right, so to do that, uh, again, I've got the, the previous one up. So we're going to uh, remove the text box and the action tool. We're not going to use those. We're going to use a different set of tools. So let's go to the interface palette and choose the dropdown tool, drag and drop that onto our canvas. Uh, and then we're going to connect uh, this hourglass looking output here or a magnifying glass, sorry, output here to the lightning. All right, and we'll get another uh, action tool automatically. Let's click on the drop down. I will always rename this to something that the user will understand. So I'm going to say enter department here. And then we're going to choose uh, not, not field types from the list of values, but we're going to choose external source. And uh, notice that it says that then it must contain a name and value fields. In other words, the names of the columns going into this particular tool need to have a name and value as the column names. So let's choose that. Now, from here, I would normally go on and click the Properties button and connect to SQL Server, but we have not created the table or view for this dropdown tool to use as its data source. So what we need to do is go back over into SQL Server Management Studio and create the view that we're going to use as our lookup. And remember, we're looking up the department name, so we only want to take the unique department names from here. All right, so let's begin a new query. And I just want to reiterate, I'm doing this with SQL Server. Uh, you can do this with Oracle or another database uh, management system, not just SQL Server. So uh, let's at least get the query working. So I'm going to select uh, the department name, okay, from uh, the table that's called dim uh, employee. All right, so let's let's take that. Uh, now, normally I wouldn't run and execute this for every single row on the table, but I just want to make sure I'm pulling it correctly. All right, that looks fine. I might use a, a top 10 or top 100s to make sure it works. Now, remember that in our query or in Alteryx, we needed this to be called name. So we're going to alias this using the as keyword, and then we're going to put name in brackets because name is a reserved word. And then we just need to replicate this again because it needs it for both name and value, okay? So I'll put that in there. Uh, and then I'm gonna just pause for a minute and tell you why there's, there's name and value, because you could use the input as a, as a source from a, a view or a table that uses a primary key or has a, an index on it that's, an, that's a numeric or integer field. Uh, that isn't the case here. The department name doesn't have one of those, so we're just gonna repeat it twice. The other thing we need to add is the keyword uh, distinct in here. And that means that it's only going to pull unique values from this table. So we can look at it and see it's only pulling the 16 unique department names. All right, so we have we have half of this done. Now, the other thing I mentioned in the previous video was that we want to be able to select all of the departments. All right, and in order to do that, we need to have a selection called all departments, even though there isn't really a department called that. Uh, it'll make sense when, when we put this all back together here. So we're going to copy that select statement, but we're going to remove the distinct portion of it and the name, and we're going to just hard code one in called all departments. All right, and we're going to do the same. We're going to copy that entry and paste it over the department name as well. And then we're going to add a union all statement here. Okay, so what's going to happen is it's going to list a row with all departments and then it's going to list the actual departments after it. And so now we'll have 17. Excellent. So that's working the way we want. Let's go back and let's make this an actual view. So we'll say create view. I like to name them as LK, LKP, so they're lookups uh, and uh, department name. Now, the other thing I sometimes do is throw the word Alteryx in there somewhere 
uh, just so that my DBAs know that that's exactly what I'm using it for. I might put it at the beginning, whatever, but we won't do that here. All right, so it's created, uh, or it, the code is there. Let's go ahead and execute it, and now we can go over to Views. Let's refresh the list, and we'll see the department name in there. And if I run it, I get exactly what I would expect. Name and value are the column names. Perfect. Okay, let's go back into Alteryx. Now I can go back to the drop-down tool, choose Microsoft SQL Server, make sure that external source is still selected. I'm using a local SQL Server, but you could use a remote one if you want. The databases AdventureWorks were okay, so let's go ahead and connect to it. I'm going to expand AdventureWorks from my list. And, uh, DBO, the database owner, expand that list, and then we'll go and look for our lookup department name and we'll drag and drop that onto the main tab here. Choose name and value and click OK. All right, so those will come in. Now I need to go over to the action tool and configure the action tool. So let's expand symbol and then expand operands and then choose operand value selection. Remember, we want to replace the word selection with the drop down value that we selected in the drop down tool. Okay, so that's all set up. Now we need to do one other thing. Because we have all departments as an available option, we need to make sure there's a department name called all departments. In order to do that, we have to duplicate the data set that's coming in and then change the name of the department for every single row to all departments. All right, so to do that, we're going to pull in from the preparation menu a formula tool. All right, so I'll bring that in and I'm going to get rid of the browse tool I had here before. And within the formula tool, we're going to select the column department name. And then we're again going to hard code in all departments. OK, that's going to replace the value that's currently in the department name field. So if it was finance, it will now be called all departments. It's going to do that for every single record. All right, then the next thing we need to do is union this back to the original data set. And so we're going to go to the join menu, choose the union tool, drop that just behind the filter, and then reconnect this back up. OK, so again, what, we, what we've basically done is told Alteryx that we have two data sets. The original data set coming in on stream one with the department names as they are in the database, and then a second stream that just has all departments for every single department name. So when we're in the filter and we choose all departments, we'll just get the data from the second stream rather than the data filtered from the first one. All right, now, the other thing I like to do is actually run the uh, the workflow, a regular run, not running it as a, an analytic app one time. And I do that because I want to make sure that this drop down tool has the the actual lookup table data in it before I execute it as an analytic app. Sometimes if you run it uh, as an analytic app before you've actually run the data through, your new selections won't be in your lookup. So let's go ahead and run this now as an analytic app. And we'll see that all departments is listed along with the other departments uh, in the drop down list. Now, I like to make sure I didn't break anything when I've added something new. So let's go and choose sales first from this list. Choose to click finish. And then when we click OK, Excel will open with uh, with the data, hopefully filtered correctly. And it is it's filtered. So I know I didn't break anything. That functionality still works. Now let's go back and test the all departments option and click finish and then click OK and Excel will open and we'll see that we have all departments in here. Now we still need to scroll down and make sure that all of the other departments didn't come in. In essence, that would be duplicate data and it didn't. There's only 296 uh, values uh, rows in this table um, plus one for the header row. So 297 in Excel makes sense. So all of that worked out exactly the way that I wanted it to. All right. Now, when I was putting together this demo for you, one of the things that I ran into was that I spelled the words all departments incorrectly in the database, but I spelled it correctly uh, in one of the tools. And so when I went to go match up the filter to what was in the database, it didn't come through correctly. It was blank. So if that happens to you, that's probably a key indicator that you may have mistyped something, especially if you're hard coding these, that could be a problem. 
that's that is an issue the other issue you could run into didn't happen on this project but happened on another one is i made a change to the underlying lookup table and when i changed it i never actually executed the alter statement on that particular view and so it was never reflected as a change in alterx that could happen to you as well and that's a, a key tip off that something's wrong is if you don't see the changes in alterx even after having run the regular workflow uh, then you probably didn't save your changes in the database. So those are my hints and tips on doing this. Again, this was a pretty simple example, but it does get you into a dr data-driven drop-down box and interface tool. As usual, leave comments. I love to see feedback, especially around other videos that I can post for you. Thank you.